One of the things that's really important for trappers to know is the market as to where their skins are going to go at, what they're going to end up being used for. And uh, for wolves, wolverines, bears, the most important market is going to be the taxidermy market. A pelt that's handled properly for the market can, can bring as high as $500 sometimes for, for taxidermy skin. When we start missing parts on it, the price drops really quick. So the market is taxidermy, rugging it, so they'll make a, a bearskin rug or a wolverine rug with a plastic head and teeth. It can, it, it can be handled slightly different than a, than a full mount. So that would drop the price by probably $200. The next cut would be if you're going to uh, do a, like a wall hanger, and then it's going to be a lot less. So you take a $500 pelt, if you make some mistakes in skinning it, it now turns into a $200 pelt. The bottom end of the market is going to be trim, or else the, the garment trade, what we uh, normally skin for. If you're missing all the claws, the pads, the inside lips, the ears aren't done properly, it becomes a piece of trim, and it's worth like $100. So if your market starts at $500, you can quickly turn a $500 pelt into a $100 pelt. So this is an example of a skin that's improperly handled and what it will end up being is either trim on a parka or it could be sold as a wall hanger where somebody would like to buy a wolverine and just hang it on their wall. But the value of the skin compared to a taxidermy uh, style goes from like $500 in taxidermy well handled to like $150 when it's handled like this. Now if you look at the way that the feet are handled, there's not enough material left on the feet in order for them to do a mount. And in this case, actually in the back foot here, there's actually some uh, claws missing. So it really quickly takes it away from being a taxidermy skin. Now if it's missing just one claw or two claws, you could skin it out properly and they can, they can put in claws on it. But if it's missing, if it's a damaged foot like this one here, it cannot be used for taxidermy. Taxidermy skins have to have the complete lip on it there's actually an inner lip, and I'm going to show that today, how you, how you uh, skin the inner lip so they have the material to put it on a mount like that. Now the same as this uh, wolf here. When you're looking at this wolf, one of the first things I see is a great big eye hole like that. They need to have quite a bit of material from around the eye in order to put it on a mount like we have in front of us here. And again, you need to have the inner lips done. There's just barely the, the outer edge of the lips here, and it's not enough material for them to attach it to the mold properly. Also, if you look at the feet here, because the feet weren't skinned out with all the pads on them, again, you can't make a mount out of it. So it quickly eliminates this skin from that top end of your market. So when you're handling a wolf, a wolverine, or a bear, you're going to skin it what we call complete skin with eyelids attached, uh, inside lip split, ears done properly, feet done properly. You have to scrape the skin so that there's no extra fat on it. Now, on average, it's going to take you anywhere from five to eight hours to skin a, uh, a wolverine skin or a wolf skin properly for the market. It's a lot of work and you want to make sure you pick the proper skins for it. Not every skin will work for taxidermy. Taxidermy guys like the biggest and the heaviest furred skins. That's the ones you're going to make the most money from. Small skins, damaged skins, you might as well skin them for the trim trade or for the wall hanger trade because it's, that's where it's going to end up. It's not going to bring you the same amount of money. For wolverines, you're talking wolverines over 36 inches, and for wolves, you're talking wolves over 40, 54 inches when they're measured out. The different tools I have laid out here in my toolkit here make the job of skinning much easier, and it allows me to give a professional job. Everybody's worried about having a sharp knife, but just as important as having a sharp knife is to have a really good fur comb. This is a dog slicker brush. And you should brush your animals three or four times before you actually skin them. There shouldn't be any debris or anything left in the skin. It should be brushed right out so it looks like it's going out on a date. You need, definitely need a tail stripper, a, a pelting knife, some sort of pelting knife. A pair of pliers are really handle for, handy for when you're uh, doing the bones around the feet. A pair of heavy duty uh, scissors are really good. Uh, a bone of some sort for fleshing. And I also use a draw knife for fleshing. It's really important to get the saddle off of the Wolverine and really important is to have push pins and when you're buying push pins, buy the 5 8 size. They're a little bit longer than the uh, half inch and it's going to make a lot of difference for you when you're handling them. Just a little trick for you is to put your pi push pins in a piece of styrofoam and it stops them from falling on the floor. So it's a nice way to have them laid out and easy to reach and not be a safety hazard for you. 
And uh, I have one other little tool that I use quite a bit. Is a, uh, it's just a, a big treble hook with the barb grounded off of it. And I use that for when I skin out the feet. And as I go through the skinning procedure, I'm going to be able to uh, show you and explain to you why it's such a valuable little tool to have as an extra. So I have a fancy little tool kit that I use. I have, I'm able to, to stuff all my tools within uh, my, my uh, case here, roll it up, and it's, and it's great for flying. Okay, so a big consideration before you start skinning any animal is to make sure you prep it properly. Now, again, I can't emphasize enough to make sure you have a good fur brush and give it a good brushing to make sure you get out any sort of twigs or sticks or anything that might be stuck onto the, to the animal before you start to skin it. Later on, after I've skinned this, I'm going to flesh it on a beam. And if there's any debris in it, I can put a hole in it. So it only takes a couple of minutes. You want the pelt to be as clean as possible before you start. Okay, so once I have them nicely brushed out, uh, one of the first things I'm going to do before I hang it up is I'm going to put a few uh, cuts in it just to start it off. And uh, one of the first ones I like to make is I take the front leg, I go to where the pad is, right here. I take my knife and I run it back down to the elbow down here, right where the elbow is. See where the elbow? Okay, and you can actually take your knife and just gently start the skinning process so that when you come down to this part, it'll come off the, the carcass a lot easier. I don't spend a lot of time here, but I just like to start it off, especially with a big animal like a, like a wolverine. Okay, just, just open it up a little bit, and then I'll do the same thing on the other one. I'll look for that heel pad. You'll see later on as we get to that part of the animal why I like to do that. Now, this is kind of critical here, the initial cut. You want to make the initial cut uh, relatively a straight line across. And basically, because I want to keep the anal opening attached, I'm going to cut it just in front of the... the the butthole here, I'm going to cut it just in front of it and I'm going to go across to each leg here. I start back up here on the, on the heel, stick my knife in, and start to cut. And I make that cut, so I've cut it to the front of the hole and I'll continue this cut right across here. And when I skin out, I'll leave the, uh, the butthole attached to the pelt near the tail. So unlike a lot of other skinning jobs, when you're skinning for taxidermy, there's generally a lot more knife work involved, a lot more skinning, not so much pulling, pulling the hide. You've got to skin it off. And you have to be careful. You're trying your best always never to make a hole in it. If you're going to make a mistake, it's not bad if you make it in the long hair part. You know, when the hair is really long, it's hide, easy to hide. But if you make the same mistake up in the nose and that, it's a lot harder for the, for the fella doing the taxidermy to try and, or the person doing the taxidermy, it's going to be a lot harder for them to hide that. And some of it you can stick your fingers in and push, push it off the case, the uh, carcass. In other parts, you've got to continuously use your knife. Now you can, at this stage here, you can uh, pop it apart at the joint, okay, like so. Separate the paw part, which there's a lot of work to be done on it, and work on it later and then uh, stick at uh, skinning the rest of the carcass off. So I will skin out all my paws like this for now, temporary. And I will just take them apart at the joint, and then later on I'm gonna show you how I process them from there. Now when you're skinning around the uh, vent hole, there's two glands that have like a, a, a pussy susp substance in them, and you try to avoid cutting those. And you just, just keep enough material so that it's intact. 
So I'm just carefully skinning here in the back, trying to uh, get between the, the tailbone here and the body. And then as you start going here, you can skin down the tail part way. Eventually we got to split it. As I'm getting ready to get the tailbone out and it can be very uh, hard to do. So what I'm doing is I'm splitting it a bit, split, splitting the skin itself a little bit, just to help facilitate getting the tail off. Because at the end we're going to split the tail down the length anyways. So it's just a matter of lining it up and splitting it in the right place. And you can see how the tail's coming off for me here. And when I get it down far enough, I should be able to get in there with my tail stripper and then just split the tail, pull the tail right out. So we'll give it a shot here again. And I'll tell my, try my tail stripper again here. It should be pretty close to being able to come out right to the tip here. But as it is for now, it's just a matter of pulling it down. You can uh, put a little pressure on it and pull it and kind of pull it off and skin it off at the same time. Give her a bit of a shot here with the tail. And again, we raised the Wolverine up so that it's comfortable to work at and we just continue to skin down here. The more comfortable your skinning job is for you, the better job you can do in the skinning itself. So it's a combination, you see me skinning and pulling here a little bit. Now you can see what I mean by some sort of, I don't know if it's a piece of lead or something he was shot at. but. If you see something like that when you're skinning, you have to be really careful when you flesh not to make a hole there. So basically what I'm trying to do here now is get my rod in. And you can put a little pressure and you can see how I pulled it off. Now if you remember when we kind of first started out here, that's why I like to kind of start the leg like that and split it. It goes just a little faster when you I'm going to get down to the front legs and then again you can just kind of take your time a little bit and uh, skin it down. I'm going to do the same process where I uh, skin it down to the front feet or back feet and then cut it off at the joint. So, okay, so I kind of feel where the joint is, kind of put a little pressure on it and then I cut the tendons here. Take her apart right there. Okay, so the both legs are out. Okay, so when you're out in the field or in the camp and you uh, you got to get it peeled as quickly as you can, you want to get it skinned. Because there's so much detail work that has to go on with the, keeping the pads and the claws, the way the trick to use is, a, is to skin it down, split it, skin it down to the, to the joint, and then just cut it at the joint like so, and it allows you time later to do the detail work more comfortable than trying to do it right on the carcass standing up like this. Next step is to uh, to get down to the, to the ears here, the neck and the ears. Always wanting to be careful in the neck area because there's a couple of big veins and uh, you prefer not to, uh, not to cut the veins because it'll kind of bleed on you a bit more. So there's an ear butt and uh, I'll take my time here a little bit and clean it up a bit and then I'll go back and I cut it off close to the skull and then I Need to trim it out here. But that's an ear butt. Now a trick that I use when I don't have enough height in my skinning is rather than, you see me bending down here, but rather than do that, I'll back up a little bit and put some pressure on the pelt like so and continue to skin it like that. Now around the head, you have three key things that you have to worry about. You have to worry about the ears, getting the eyes done properly and getting the lips done properly. So it's a little bit more painstaking. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll cut the head right off 
and I'll just keep it with the paws and then freeze the pelt for later processing. It buys me some time. Another good trick to do in order to stop the head from drying out is to take a plastic bag and put it over the head so it stops the moisture from, uh, from coming out of it. Now I'm basically at the eyes here. There's a lot of material in here and if you don't get it out properly, it's really difficult for the taxidermy person to, uh, to work with that. Okay, so you can basically, if you look here, you can see that I have very small eye holes and I have material, okay, that's left the eyelids in, in the, eye, the eye kind of socket. And that's what I'm after in here. And I'm trying to, to keep it as complete as I can. And again, it's, it's one of those situations where you're better off to have too much material than not enough material. Now I'm coming up to the lips here. And I know I'm going to have a bit of trouble because they're completely dried out. And I uh, tried earlier to wet them, to put a bit of moisture back into them and uh, to keep them going like that. But basically now what I'm going to do is I'm going to skin it right down to the jawline and follow along. And I want to get as much lip material as I possibly can. You can see when you look at it that there's quite a bit of material here. And I'm going to show you after how you, how you prepare that but I'm right up on the jawline. I want this material in here. You can see how it's dried out here, how it's a little bit harder to work with. But it's coming off not too bad. And uh, again, you do your best to preserve that. But you want all that material, all of that lip material, if possible, you want to try and preserve it. Okay, so now, if you look at it closely, you can see the lip material. There you go. Okay, so that's gone really cr hard and crusty because it's freezer burnt a bit. So you try your best to avoid that. And you do that by putting a plastic bag right over the head and it'll stop it from drying out. You'll see it in the nose and lip area and sometimes in the ears. Again, I just want to reiterate that uh, the biologists are always looking for the carcasses, so it's really important to turn it in. And they have carcass tags that they ask us to uh, apply to the animal and put the date of the harvest and who, who uh, harvested it and whatnot. So basically, once you have it off at this stage, you can turn it fur out, roll it up in a tight ball and you can freeze it if you want to work on it, process it a bit later. Today we're going to work right away on it and uh, we're going to start by, uh, by doing the paws. And uh, like I said earlier, we, uh, in order to the detail work to get the paws correct, we take the paws right off and then later on we go back now and we'll skin them out. So, and what I uh, like to use is just a nice big treble hook like this with the barb cut off it and then I can hook it right in it. Now you could take this thing and hook it on a pool in the camp or a raft or anything, just something so you anchor solidly and you're able to pull. It gives you like an extra hand to work with. So I pull, I skin a bit, I pull it, and you have to be conscious of where the claws are and the joints, because you want to skin it down to each toe, but keep it attached. Now of course the first claw is going to be the outside claw. Now you can feel it, you'll feel the claw in there and then you'll know you're close to the last joint. And when you get to the last joint, it's just a matter of cutting it right at, right at the uh, knuckle joint. So you're skinning it right to the end of the finger, so it's just the last joint. So there's just basically the claw left in place. But it's fully attached to the pelt, which is very critical. The other tool that I like to use in this step is a pair of bullnose pliers. And it just allows me to, uh, to pull a little bit, help work it down. And as it skins, You'll see me reach in with my fingers and uh, pull it, and that helps get it out. And again, I'm right down. I can feel the knuckle right there, the back of the claw. So I'm right up there, and I'll reach in here now and cut it off at the joint on the claws. So you can see it's, it's coming out. Normally, I go back and forth on each side and do... Uh, one toe on one side, one toe on the other side, or maybe two toes on the one side and then go over to the other side. Because the two middle digits are very long. They're like your hand and they have uh, 
longer joints to them. So basically that's what you're left with. Shorter one on the outside and then the two center ones are the long ones and two shorter ones. And uh, what you're trying to achieve is a sock like this. So now it's complete. You can take it and you can push it right back out. And that's how you have that intact looking foot. What I'm starting to do now is a little bit of the fleshing and you have to remove the excess uh, material on it. Now around the head, it's not so bad, but down into the body, especially across the back, there's a, a heavy membrane there that needs to come off. And I see a lot of wolverines when they come to the auction house, they'll be dripping grease, dripping oil out of them, and it's because uh, they haven't been uh, scraped. Is this saddle here, underneath the saddle there's white fat, and it has to, uh, it has to be scraped. So a good, good aid for that, something to use that works pretty good to help scrape it is a, is a uh, draw knife and a bit of sawdust. Now as long as the sawdust is clean, it doesn't really matter what type of sawdust it is. Now you can see bits of fat coming off here. That's the material that we want to get off. Now what I'm using is a draw knife and the draw knife is dull. It has a very sharp side, which I don't use. And uh, what you want to use when you're fleshing is the dull side. You can see us working off this saddle here. And this is a very important step. This is called fleshing. It takes a bit of elbow grease, but you uh, clean it up and you remove the excess fat and you allow the pelt to, prop to dry properly. It won't drip oil. Now there's different ways to do this. You can use a bone and do it on a flat surface if you like or you can do it on a beam like I have here. And there's different types of beams out there. This, is, this is, works as a very good method. But see how much material is coming off here? All that excess stuff, if you don't get it off, the pelt can't properly dry. And that's what we call the saddle. And the heaviest areas for the saddle are behind the front legs and the belly down the back. Okay, so once you've, you've fleshed it, next step is to board it, and uh, we're going to start that in a minute. So, At this stage, what we want to do is take this lip material here and open it up so that it'll dry properly. If you feel it with your fingers, you'll feel it kind of a jelly soft spot. Now when you look at it, it's double folded. So when you start, you start further back, and you start to, to open up the material. Now you take it, you take this material down to this black part here and you'll see it as you're skinning here. See how I got it down to the black here? You can start seeing it showing up. That's the, that's the inner lip. See how, how much extra material there is now? Now this material is used in the taxidermy business to glue the pelt to the mold. And you have to do it right up to the nose. Now you can see it's a little bit dried out right in this area here, which makes it a little more difficult to work with. And you can prevent that by skinning it as quickly as you, uh, as you can when you catch it and putting a bag over its head so it doesn't freeze or burn. Here we go, our lips are split. Now the next thing you want to do, once you have that cleaned up, is to work on the ears a little bit. Now the ears, kind of like the same as the, uh, 
lips need to be split, need to remove the excess meat material, but at the same time you have to again leave, make sure you leave enough material so that the person that's going to work on the skin after still has it to be able to, uh, to attach it to the hide. Now another tool that I like to use in these finer details like this are a pair of scissors and these aren't the average scissors that you're going to find in somebody's sewing kit. These are a heavy duty pair of scissors. They're very sharp or what I use them for is cleaning up any excess. Now the ear is very small on a Wolverine so you have to take a great deal of care to open it up here. Now if you look at the ear there's a cartilage to it and what you have to do is separate the back of the cartilage off the ear. What I mean is this area right in here there's a fine cartilage and uh, you need to start separating it so that the ear itself can dry out. Okay, so now if you look, if you compare ears here, you can see how it's been opened up here. And you have to repeat the process on the other side here. If this was a wolf ear, you'd have a piece about two inches long. But the ears on a wolverine are relatively small, so you're only talking less than an inch. But basically what you're trying to achieve here is to get the skin off the back of the ear so that it can properly dry. Not so critical in a wolverine, but very, very critical in a wolf. Your ears will slip if you don't get the, get it done properly. Okay, so once you've got your ears done and your uh, lips done, take a second and square this thing up on the board properly. Nothing looks worse than an animal that comes in that's crooked. Okay, so I've pinned my legs, I've pinned my tail. I'm going to work on the front legs here now. Split them down a bit more. Now there's material here that I need to clean up with the scissors. Not a lot, but a little bit. So the first thing I want to do, tuck in the Martin board here. Again, you pin it out. So it'll dry. Same thing on the other side here. Okay, when you get up to the lips now, you can put one in the middle here, and then you can kind of pin that material over a bit so it'll dry, opened up. Okay, another little point for consideration is the cartilage in the nose. You don't want to remove it all, but you have to remove some of it. They want to be able to have enough nose so that they can, uh, they can put it on the mount, but uh, you can see I took quite a big piece out of it. And I'll even trim up the center here a bit more. Also around the eyes, you have to make sure you have enough material with the eyelids. And it's basically close to splitting the lips. You have to check and make sure you got that eyelid material there. And again, they need this little bit of extra material here so that they can again glue it to the, to the mold. Now he's pinned on the board, the lips are pinned out, legs are pinned out, back legs are pinned, tails pinned, length pinned. You're going to stand it up against the wall and you're going to let it dry. You want this hide to dry out a certain amount before you turn it. And that should take, uh, generally it'll take roughly 12 to 20 hours depending on what sort of temperature you have. And as soon as it, as soon as like right now it's tacky and you can feel it's wet, as soon as you feel it's dry, it's time to turn it. If it gets too dry, it's going to be really difficult to, to get off the board and turn. So basically what happens now is we stand it up. So push out the legs a little bit and get it to dry. Okay, so what I'm doing here, the pelt's too dry on the board, so I want to be able to turn it without a lot of uh, hassle, is I'm just wetting it a bit. And I'm not 
soaking it, I'm just putting a damp cloth on it. This is just a paper towel. I'll let it sit for a couple of minutes and then it'll slide off the uh, board no problem and it'll allow me a lot easier time to turn this, the fur uh, from being skin out to fur out. Okay, so you want the leg inside like that. You have to be careful at this step that you don't tear it. Okay, and you have to do both of them. Okay, so that's, the legs are turned fur out. When you turn something, you're gonna find that if you, if you wait too long, that it can be very difficult to turn. And uh, so that's why as, as the pelt dries, you should always be kind of checking it out to make sure that it's, it's dry, but it's not over dry, so you have a hard time to turn it. And there's a couple of different ways to turn it. You can turn it from the bottom up if you like, but the bottom line is to make sure that it's turned back for out. To work in a bit of borax on it, and it'll just help absorb the grease and the oil that might be left after you scraped it and fleshed it. When we use borax, it's a good preservative and uh, it's used quite extensively across the trade and it's just a good way to make sure that the animal stays dry without going bad on you. Borax is like a, a, a preservative that will draw out the moisture out of the areas. So as you're turning things, if you find that they're a little bit wet, uh, you add borax to it and then definitely it's going to dry properly without causing you any problems. So when I get it to this stage, I'll reach inside and I'll start pulling it and I got the nose coming out here. So once you have it turned back out, I'm just working it a little bit to stretch it back out to get the right uh, form again. Make sure the legs are pulled out. And then what I would do now is slide the board back into it. And always when you're doing this step, always take the time to make sure that the, the animal is lined up straight on the pelt. You don't want a twisted pattern, you want it nice and straight. You want to see that diamond back on the wolverines and line it up a bit more so that, it, so that it's basically equal. So that I have the diamond pattern, this section here, centered in the middle of the board. And uh, you'd be surprised how much uh, cleaner the skin looks like if you keep brushing it and how uniform the hair looks on it. Okay, now if you notice here, I've left the, the, the bum opening, the anal opening attached to the pelt. and. Uh, I just have to feed the tail back up here, back through the opening here. Just again, it's like, it's just like the legs, you work it out. Okay, so you're left with the anal opening of the animal. And this allows the taxidermy to mount it and have a complete skin. And there's only a little piece that I have here. And it's a, this is again where you use your borax and you can rub it right into the skin here and it preserves it really good, helps preserve it. You still want to, you need to get it dry. And like I said earlier, borax is an excellent material to help, uh, it aid in the drying. It's not the only thing that needs to be done, but it aids in the drying. Now what we have to do now is we have to turn the feet back for out. They're inside so they dry a little bit. Okay, the trick is to get them to dry just enough and then you push them back out. Okay, so I'm going to push this one out here to give you an idea. Now if you find it too dry, wrap it up like this really tight and it's a wet paper towel. Leave it on the board for a few minutes and then I just start pushing it out and it takes a little bit of force. Remember there's, uh, there's claws in here so you gotta be a little bit careful. But as you work it, you'll see the claws starting to pop out and you just keep pushing, pushing and you'll see how the claws keep coming out and then eventually, eventually it's just gonna pop right out here. Okay, so there, there it is. So grab it and pull on each toe so you get it opened because there's a little bit of slack in there Okay, and then once it's done, grab a bit of borax. Now you're going to feel each toe is still pretty pliable because it's not dry yet, but it'll dry now. Probably takes you three or four days to get it dry. And you can take your fingers and you can work the borax kind of right into the end where the claw is. And then once you get it where you want it, grab your paper towel here, roll it up in a ball and just slide it in here, okay? And again, just keep keeping an eye on your claws to make sure that they're, they're gonna be in the right presentation for you, and it's ready to go. So once you have the animal back on the board, the feeder back all out looking really good, and pin it down so it stays on the board in one spot. Now remember, it's gonna take probably two more days on the board to dry properly at least. Then the feet will keep their shape and the legs will be nice and straight. If you don't do that, 
if there's a bit of moisture left, it could all get all twisted up and, and wrinkly and not look very well for presentation. Just to make sure that your front legs dry nice and straight, you take the boards again, you slide them back up inside like so, center it on the board, just put a couple of pins in it so it holds its shape, keeps it nice and straight. And what the uh, boards allow it to do is allows it somewhere flat to dry to and it keeps it nice and straight instead of getting twisted up. Okay, we got one more pin we want to put in in the tail. Okay, so something that's really important here is once the Wolverine has been on the forming board for a day or two, you're going to take it off now. Well, you still want to make sure it's uh, completely dry and you need to dry it for about two more days after you take it off the board. So basically what you do, you take your Wolverine, he's on the board, take out your pins. At this time you can take out your uh, paper that's stuffed inside the, uh, the toes. And like I said earlier, to do a good job with that, grab yourself a pair of pliers and you can, uh, there'll be some borax that'll fall out, but don't worry about it. And then pull it off the board. Now, again, as soon as you take it off the board, take a second and brush it out nice and neat. Can't emphasize brushing it enough. You want that skin to look as neat as possible. Take it by the nose here and hang it up. Just hang it up on the wall for two or three days just so it completely dries right out and then that way there we know it's going to be formed properly.